Hello everyone. My name is Kushar Singh, and today in this task, I'm going to show you how we can use K-means unsupervised algorithm to predict the optimal number of clusters, and then classify our data set based on those optimal number of clusters, and then finally represent it in the form of one visualization. So let's first import some basic libraries like NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Okay, and now let's import our data set, which is Iris in this case. Now let's see the first five observations of our data. Okay, so here you can see that our data set has six columns, ID, sample length, sample width, petal length, petal width, and species. You can also see that the last column species contains only categorical variables and which uh, as you can see contains the category to which a particular row or i can say the flower belongs to all right so let's move ahead now let's see the shape of our data so our data set contains 150 rows and six columns now let's see some most common descriptive statistics of our data okay so here you can see the eight different statistics descriptive statistics like count mean standard deviation minimum and maximum so count basically means the number of values or the observations in each particular column in our data set mean simply means the mean or the average of each particular column. Similarly, standard deviation means the standard deviation in each column of our data set. Minimum means the minimum value in each column. Similarly, 25% uh, here means the first quartile, which means the, uh, the lowest 25% values and the rest 75% larger values. So, here you can see sample length contains 5.1. So that means the inverse quartile, 25% values contains less than or equal to 5.1. And the rest 75% values are higher than 5.1, which is the length in centimeter in sample length column. Similarly, 50% is the second quartile, which means lowest 50% values, then the rest higher 50% values, and 75% means the third quartile, which means the lowest 75% values, and the rest 25% higher values. And maximum, as you can guess, it is the maximum value in each column. Okay, so now let's see whether our data set has any missing values or not. So as you can see that our data set has no missing values. Okay, so this is the describe function again. Now let's import standard scalar helper function. And now convert our, or you can say scale our data set by using standard scalar function. So standard scalar basically scale our data in the range from minus one to one. Uh, which we basically uh, do because because to avoid some uh, problems that we make and encounter because of you know the scaling issues and scaling is also one of the most important properties when whenever we have to use sklearn because sklearn sometimes uh, use distance based algorithms like uh, knn or uh, different distance calculation like Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance, so where we have to scale our data, otherwise, uh, you know, the fitting of our model uh, won't be optimal as we want. Now, let's create one instance of our standard scalar, which is scalar, and then fit our data. As you can see, we, we can only use four, first four columns, sorry, four columns, and sample length, sample width, 
petal length and petal width. We can't use the last column because that column contains categorical variables and categorical variables we can't scale because they are not they are non-numeric variables. Okay. Now let's convert our scale data into a data frame. So here you can see our data as contains values only in the range of minus one to one, right? And we don't have the last column as you can see here. Uh, basically, uh, last column we will use for the categorization purpose later on when we have to visualize our cluster based on the species. So in that case, we have to use the last column, species column. Now, now the main part, which is the finding of an optimal number of clusters. So first we can create one empty list SSE scale, SSE underscore scale, and then import k means helper function from sklearn.cluster package. Now in this loop, what I'm gonna do is first create our k means model. And here I've taken only two parameters, n jobs and number of clusters. So n jobs basically represent how many cores of your CPU you want to use for data computation process, right? And minus one basically means that I want to use all the cores of my CPU in data computation. So if your CPU has quad core or dual core, and if you uh, specify minus one here, that means that you want to use all the cores of your system. N cluster simply means the number of clusters that we want to use. So here is, I want to use 20 different clusters from one to 20, as you can see. And K means not fit means training of our K means model by using data scale parameter. And then finally, pass the, uh, our K means model to our empty list and extract the inertia parameter from that train model. So let's run this code. So inertia basically means the intra-cluster distance, which means the distance uh, from the centroid to all the other points within the same cluster. And as uh, if you know the properties of clustering, that intra-cluster distance, sometimes known as inertia, should be as low as possible because we want compact or closed, closed bounded cluster, uh, cluster for our visualization purpose. And you can see also for the classification for better classification purpose. So lower the value of inertia, the higher the chance that we will classify our data better. Okay, now let's visualize visualize our cluster and our uh, inertia values in the form of an elbow curve. Okay. So here you can see it's the plot between the number of cluster from one to 20 and the SSC value, which contains the inertia value, intra-cluster distance value. So this is an elbow curve now, as I already mentioned that we have to take the, uh, we have to take only those cluster values which have lower, you know, inertia values because we want compact cluster. We want lowest distance from the centroid to the other points within the same cluster. So basically we usually take the point which lies in the elbow of the elbow curve. So here, I think the elbow starts forming somewhere around three. So the corresponding inertia value to three, uh, you can see the third cluster is, I think somewhere around 100, two or three. So let's take uh, three as our optimal number of cluster because uh, here, uh, 
here is our elbow starts forming. Okay, so let's take three as our number of cluster now, and then again create our k means model, then trained using that data scaled. Okay, now let's see the predictions that we got using k means. All right, so here you can see that we got only zero, one, and two in our prediction, which simply means that so zero, one, two simply represent uh, to which cluster our data set belongs to or our data belongs to. So zero means the, fl the first cluster, first one means the second cluster, and second means the third cluster to our data belongs to. Now let's create a data frame from the data scaled data and then add one column cluster to our newly created data frame and in that uh, column we will pass the prediction that we got here. All right. Now let's see the uh, values in our cluster column using the value counts function. So as you can see in the first cluster, this is zero cluster, contains 47 values, second cluster contains 50 values, and the third cluster contains 53. And if you sum these values, you will get 150, right? That is 100 and then 50. Now, let's see the first five observation of our data frame. So here you can see, this is our newly created column cluster. One means the second cluster. So these five observation belongs to the second cluster, right? And this this simply means the first, sorry, the second column, this column. Now finally, let's uh, visualize our newly created clusters with the help of scatter plot. So here you can see the our three different clusters represent in the red, blue, and green colors and classify on the basis of the species. So I already mentioned before the use of the last column. So last column basically used to classify our clusters into different categories. So here we have three categories, iris, setosa, iris, versicola, iris, virginica. And on the basis of these three categories, we classify our three different clusters. And the yellow points basically denotes the centroid of each cluster. This is the centroid of this cluster, this is the centroid of this cluster, and this is the centroid of this cluster. So this is how we uh, uh, use clustering to find the optimal number of cluster and how we can visualize our clusters. Now, one point I want to mention here, which I think is the is very relevant point. So here I have taken inertia values, okay, to uh, find the optimal number of cluster. So here my elbow start forming somewhere around three. So that's why I've taken the value three as my number of cluster. And you can see three also has the lowest value of inertia. But in, instead of inertia, if you want to take some other parameter, so you can also take so other parameter can be the done index. So done index basically means the inter cluster distance, which represents the distance between two different clusters. And if you know the properties of clustering, that inter cluster distance should be as high as possible so that we can uh, segregate different clusters, you know, in a best way as can, so that uh, different clusters should not be, you know, overlap with each other. So in that case, our done index should be you know, high as possible. And in that case, we take the highest value. Okay, so that will be the reverse process of this. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this, you know, 
very simple demonstration of k means and how we can use k means to you know find the optimal number of cluster and then represent it visually so i want to again thank you spark foundation for providing this uh, uh, excellent opportunity to learn and uh, you know apply your skills with the help of with the help of some hands on project and once again thank you everyone for watching